You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. All right, welcome to day five of the 10 Day Nutrition Challenge. We are almost to the end of the day today. I've got a class I've got to teach for the academy tonight. And that gets over pretty late. So I said, Rachel, let's go ahead and record this at the end of the end of the night after dinner. We've completed dinner now. And the rule for today is no more alcohol. And we mentioned this on a previous day. I think this is going to be the toughest one for me, for sure. But it hasn't been hard yet. So <laughs> Keyword, yet. <laughs> yeah. Today has been okay. It is, I think we're set up well to succeed. It is Sunday night. This would be much more difficult if we were going into a weekend, a Friday or a Saturday, just because it's one of those deals where when we first started Barbell Logic, every day was kind of the same. Even the weekends were the same. I mean, they were all kind of the same days. And as time has gone on, we really work a pretty hard Monday through Friday schedule and try to relax some on Saturday and Sunday. And so that would be difficult. Today, the biggest impact I think that the no alcohol made for me is that, so you and I had an act, very active day today. A great day. Great day. It was, well, Beautiful. First off, the weather here is amazing. Yes. Weather is perfect today. It was like 61 and sunny. Absolutely perfect. We went out and played tennis. We've been trying to, we've got a <laughs> tennis court across the street from our house. We walked over there and by playing tennis, I mean, what we do is we try to see how many times we can volley it back and forth to each other. So we're kind of on the same team trying to volley it back and forth, which is a great way very to get started. Very raw right now. We're very raw. <laughs> it's, it's absolute beginners. You've never played tennis, is I've that right? I've never okay. played. I don't know how to hold correctly. Right. So the, you know, the racket. We're watching some YouTube videos and whatnot. <laughs> but the key there is that it's a Sunday. We almost never lift on a Sunday. It was not a lifting day. We lifted yesterday, had a, a good workout yesterday. Today was more of an active day and it was beautiful outside. So we went outside and played tennis for a little bit. Um, I actually had a weird blood sugar issue happen today and talked to Jillian about that this morning. I had for the first time in really months, I had a bowl of oatmeal before I had my eggs this morning. And I'll have occasionally a little bit of a reverse hypoglycemia. So I think that I had some oatmeal that tasted sweet enough. I had some Splenda in it, tasted sweet enough and certainly had some carbs. And I actually made it a little more watery than I wanted to make it because I haven't made oatmeal in a long time, put it in the microwave. And I think it spiked my insulin too high. It funneled those carbs into my cells and had some excess insulin left over. And we went out. taste buds went, mmm, sugar. Yeah, it was delicious. And I don't, of course, (laughs) we're not eating sugar and and I don't very much anyway. Right, it was a low sugar kind. Yes, the oatmeal was low sugar but the taste was sweet. And so who knows, we got out and started playing tennis and I could tell my blood sugar was crashing today. So crashed a little bit, came back, had some yogurt and some berries and and put some cashews in it and it normalized right away, it was fine. The no alcohol thing I think was interesting because after that we got around and played tennis and kind of had a little snack. We decided to go to the nature center and we did a pretty intense hike. Your heart rate <laughs> spiked up to like 173, is that right? 175. 175 hiking. Yeah, it was this pretty... is not like straight. <laughs> so it was, we're, in the is, we're not Mountains. walking in Kansas. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going up hills. There's rocks and things to step around. It's and not try not elevation. To twist your ankle. It's not elevation, but I would say no. it's similar in intensity as most of that, you know, if you hike the flat irons out in Boulder or you hike at Estes Park, or it's a typical kind, it's a pretty intense hike. It's just that we're at a thousand feet. So the air is not thin, which makes it a little, a little, right, right. a lot better. Plus I have little short legs and someone. And I was humping. Had, he was just. Well, I was trying to keep my heart rate up. And so, yeah, you were trying to catch up. <laughs> I was trying to keep up with you. So after we got done, we were talked about what are we going to do for lunch? The girls weren't with us today. And there's a new taco place in town. So it's not a chain, a really cool taco place that they've put in those um, storage containers. Pods, yeah. yeah, the pods. And uh, we went and had tacos. And typically, if we went and had tacos, mm. we wouldn't really care what kind of tacos we got. And then we would always get chips and queso. And we would always get margaritas. <laughs> and often a margarita and maybe a Corona. Or sometimes we've got a place in town, we get mezcal margaritas. That, that's our thing. Yeah. It's like, if you give me a taco, you're going to have to give me a margarita. That's right. But we didn't today. <laughs> we didn't. Today we had tacos and I had Still a grilled white fish taco. I had a grilled shrimp taco and I had a pork carnitas taco, which I'm sure was the highest fat, but didn't have a bunch of mayo and junk on the stuff. Didn't have queso. 
and you had a brisket taco and a pork mm-hmm. carnitas taco. And then they bring you some tortilla chips, and we picked on a couple tortilla chips, but didn't really have hardly They any, were glistening. Glistening with oil, so we they didn't were, have hardly yeah. any of the tortilla chips. No queso and no alcohol. And the impact it made primarily, I think, was on my calories. Now, here it is. It's, it's almost 7 o'clock at night. I'm getting ready to have my class, and I've got some calories I can play with the rest of the day. So when I get out of my class, and I'm usually pretty hungry when I'm done with my class, I can have probably another big bowl of yogurt, which to me is kind of a treat. You know, it's just plain Siggy's Icelandic yogurt. I'll put some berries in it. Maybe I'll put some nuts in it. I think I've still got some fat to give. Um, I think for me today, the no alcohol thing was really about what it meant in the grand scheme of things to the calories that we would have. Right. And it enhances the meals. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there's lots of reasons I want to have the alcohol. But but that place was great. And it was beautiful today. We sat outside. Oh, I had water. Gorgeous. You had unsweetened tea. Yep. It was fine. It was Yeah, we sat up on the deck outside. So it was great. So I didn't feel like I was sacrificing yet today. We are going to have our church life group over to our house on Tuesday night this week. And that would typically be a time when we would open a couple bottles of wine you know, maybe have an after dinner whiskey and they probably will still do that. And we're not going to, so that's probably going to be the biggest thing with temptation that we'll be up against. Um, I think we'll be fine. You know, there's some times for me when I like to have a drink in the afternoons, a lot of times while I'm working, it's sort of, I've said this on the podcast before where I go like in the morning, I'm fueled by caffeine and espresso and I'm sort of getting all the urgent stuff done for the business in the afternoons. A lot of times I like to have a cocktail and I try to go into more like creative mat and I start thinking more about strategy and things like that. And so I'm sure there's going to be some times when I'm really going to want that. We'll talk about those, I'm sure, over the next couple of days. So six days, no alcohol, probably not as big of a deal to you as it is to me. No. I enjoy it, but I don't. I think it's just something that you like to have to wind down. Sure. I don't know when the last time was that I went six days and didn't have alcohol. I bet it's been 10 or 15 years. Did you drink during COVID when you had COVID? That's true. I might have gone. I bet. I don't know if I went six days. That's true. Everything tasted so bad. That's true. I probably didn't have any. But you didn't crave it probably. I drank a lot of Coca-Cola. I drank Coca-Cola during COVID because I couldn't taste anything. I wanted bubbly and sweet. So now I'm having no Coca-Cola and no alcohol. So, uh, and I, and I thought about this, was talking to another one of our coaches today and talking to Jillian today, talking to Brittany Snyder. She's doing the same thing. She said she may go with some kombucha later this week, which has a tiny bit of alcohol in it, but it's got some of that fizziness and some of that kind of fermented taste with really not hardly any alcohol. I thought about if I really crave, then I may go get like an O'Doul's or something. I don't think I've ever bought a non-alcoholic beer in my life, but those are options. And of course, I'm going with my bubbly waters. You know, I make the carbonated water and put a lime wedge in and it looks like a gin and tonic. It doesn't taste like one, but it's, <laughs> it's still pretty good. So, so not too much temptation today. All is well. Well, and thinking of this, it made me think of a story of this happened a couple of months ago that I had a friend that their family went through COVID and we provided dinner for them. And as a gift, she had texted me and said, hey, for the new year, what is a word you would pick would be your word for this year? And I started thinking, well, I have no idea. I don't usually do New Year's resolutions. I usually don't do any kind of goals like that for the new year. But when she asked me, I just started thinking about it. And the word that kept coming to my mind was intentional, intentional, intentional. And so I said, hey, this might be really weird, but my word would be, I think, for this year, intentional. And so um, I keep coming back to that. She uh, made a bracelet for me that has the beads represent the letters of the word intentional. intentional. Yeah. So that when I look down at my bracelet, I think of that. And so, you know, with this program, we're being very intentional. And I think it's easier when you have those goals, you have, you know, 10 days of focusing on one thing each day and you're intentional about those things that you are more likely to succeed. Sure. And so we're not going to cut out alcohol completely. No. And so, and, but there are some really good habits. we will for the next six days. (laughs) Yeesh. But there's some really good habits that we are developing. Drinking water has been, I've said it before several times, has been the biggest thing for me. It's replaced the other things we drink right? Including alcohol. You're drinking so much water that even before today, our alcohol consumption was down significantly because your water consumption is up 
again, I was talking to Jillian today about the blood sugar issue. We did a phone call and I was telling her, you know, I saw this 10 day challenge and I thought when I originally looked at it, I was like, man, this is really cool. I'm really glad we're doing this. Now that I get into it, I see really even the, the, the systematic order that everything is in. Right. It's genius right. way, because it builds on itself, right? It makes you more cognizant and therefore then more intentional about what you're actually eating or right. drinking or putting into your body. And so I don't feel deprived at all. No, I mean, we've eaten, we've eaten pretty clean. It's amazing when you cut out, you know, like told the story about yesterday about having the peanuts and the cashews before dinner. Then I can look at that and go, mm, that was not a good choice. I should have had, I could have had carrots and maybe some hummus, or I could have had, we talked about like some caprese or something like that. That kind of, as I'm making dinner, having a snack that didn't put 30 grams of fat in my mouth. And so that was, but now I get to see it and go, okay, now I can be a little more intentional about the way we do this. And so, um, yeah, it's been, I think it's been really, really smart and it's yeah. worked really, really well. And I was talking to Jillian, she said the alcohol thing is interesting because for some people that's, you know, like our girls, obviously that's a gimme. It's a slam dunk. Obviously our underage daughters don't drink any alcohol right. whatsoever. So it's easy. So that's why they're not here tonight. <laughs> yeah. And for some people, it is going to be the hardest one that they do. And so she's like, I decided to put it right in the middle for that very reason, because right. if it was the hardest one you did and she put it in first thing, it would crush some people. Right. But for the ones that needed the gimmies that they could have had right. it, I mean, no big deal. So very smart the way she's put this together. It's been sure. very enjoyable so yeah. far. The thought about like with education, you know, we homeschool, most of you probably know that. And the thing that I've always learned is easy plus one. Do the easy yep. and then add something that's a yes. little bit harder. Yeah. And then master that. And then you add the, and you just keep yep. adding. Yeah, we're just adding so the habit you're not each day. overwhelmed all of a sudden by everything. And also one of the things I'd like to add is that this is just purely nutrition, but yet we have gotten kind of the kick of like eating well, kind of drives us to train and sure. go do things outside and and be more active as well. We'll go through times in our life where we train in the gym really hard, but we have not typically been people who are uber outdoorsy active. We love to be outside. I mean, we'll go play on the beach or you'll sit on the porch and we'll read a book, but we don't typically go hiking a lot, even though we like it, which is not something we really developed habit for. So it's been interesting that it's not like we're not overdoing the exercise, right? It's still just been sort of a little titrate up a little bit at a time. But not only are we lifting very consistently right now, we are going outside and doing active things. It's nice because it's March, so you can. Right. So, you know, we're hiking and we're playing tennis and we're doing stuff together and it's just really enjoyable. So, yeah, it's been great. I told Julian today, I feel great. And then here's the last thing. What I love about the 10-day challenge is it doesn't feel like a diet. Everything you're doing, you're making a healthy choice. Who doesn't need to drink more water? Who doesn't need to eat less sugar, right? <laughs> or to drink less alcohol unless you're not having any at all. You know, we're going to pare down caffeine. We're going to add fiber. We're going to add vegetables. Those are some of the things over the next couple of days. Like who doesn't need to eat more vegetables, eat more fiber, less caffeine, less alcohol, less sugar, add water. And it's not, with the exception of this, the no alcohol, it's the only thing that's actually completely cut out for the 10-day challenge. And, and that's the one thing that's probably meant in the 10-day challenge not to be long-term sustainable. But I think the goal is that you get done with this 10-day challenge and you feel so much better. And I do. I feel great right now. So we're halfway through and we'll see how the next five days go. And uh, we'll keep reporting back. Yep. Awesome. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. All right, day six of the Take Charge 10. So six days in, today was add more veggies. We got to eat more veggies. We like veggies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really just about everybody in the family really likes vegetables. It just, the hard thing about vegetables is if you don't eat them raw, then it's kind of a pain in the butt. That's really what it comes down to. Right. I mean, most people eat a vegetable, most people that eat at home, and we eat at home most nights, we cooked dinner at home. We've basically cooked dinner at home pretty much this entire this entire uh, challenge. Vegetables at dinner are easy, but to have four, five, six, seven servings of vegetables in a day, that gets really hard because it's just kind of a pain in the butt to cook them. And so we try to have raw vegetables as much as we can. So first, Kaylin is on the is got the mic for tonight. You had school today, yeah. And so uh, first off, congratulations! First day driving to school on your own. Thank you. That's a big girl. All, all went well. 
And I know that you kind of, you took off pretty quick, had, I think, a breakfast sandwich or something for breakfast, a yeah. typical school morning, got off early. And then for lunch, kind of made up for it. You, what'd you have for lunch? So for lunch, we have a McAllister's right next to school. So I drove over to McAllister's and I got a Savannah chopped salad. So that's got mixed greens, cucumbers in it. So and chicken or something, yeah, right? Chicken, chicken and like yep. some cranberries and nuts yeah. and things like that. So that's what you had for lunch. We had our typical breakfast of eggs that we do, and we put about two cups per person of spinach. So what I do is I take spinach and put it in the nonstick skillet and uh, put a little bit of beef broth or some chicken bone stock in it and cook it down a little bit and then put in the eggs. And then I put uh, cherub cherry tomatoes. And so we had about, I think about two thirds of a cup a piece maybe almost a cup. It's quite a few tomatoes and it's a whole bunch of spinach. Of course, spinach cooks down. So we really had two servings of veggies if you count tomatoes as, right. as a veggie. <laughs> For uh, all with our those eggs. technical people that's right, going, that's right. but it's not a that's veggie. Right. For lunch, you and I made a chicken salad, a homemade chicken salad, which was outstanding. So Amazing. took uh, basically kind of seared some uh, chicken breast in a cast iron skillet, then put it in the oven and let it cook. Just did kind of a dry rub seasoning on it pulled it out and we put um, grapes and apples and some cashews and we used Siggy's yogurt to bind it together and just a little bit of light mayo, but just to get a little bit of that light mayo taste was a really good salad. We're not celery. I love the flavor of celery. We use celery salt. I like the flavor. I'm not crazy about eating what feels like rope in my mouth. Like <laughs> I can't chewing. stand celery. <laughs> like, yeah. It's disgusting. You don't even like the flavor of nope. celery. Disgusting. I like. I love the flavor. Like Ooh. making a mirepoix or something. You've got like. I love that. That's well, great. cook down celery. Cook down celery is fine. Totally okay no, with right. that. But the crunch. <laughs> can't do celery at all. I just <laughs> chew it like I'm a cow. Like, yeah, me too. Yes, no. that's what I need. I need no. four stomachs. It's no. like cud. So I'm not not interested. <laughs> I remember in elementary school they'd always. They'd give us like the celery and the peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the grossest thing. Well, I mean, to thing. me, that's the one time so that celery, gross. that's basically what celery is good for. It's just a, it's a vehicle for putting things like peanut butter and other delicious <laughs> things in my belly. And then really it makes celery not that healthy, right? <laughs> it basically be as good as if you put peanut butter on, say like corrugated cardboard mm -hmm. or yeah. anything else. So, so <laughs> because favorite. we had, mm. because we had chicken salad, which is full of fruit, but not full of veggies, then we had a pretty good serving, at least one full serving, if not more, of baby carrots, raw baby carrots. And I like those. Those are great. But those get chewy, too. I mean, there's... For sure, about the eighth one, I was like, oh, boy, <laughs> yeah. I got a lot more to it, go. <laughs> it takes a while to chew. You get, to, you get some sore jaws. And then tonight, for dinner, we crushed it. We made barbecue chicken, and we used a little bit of cock sauce on it. So Cameron Cox's new cock sauce is freaking amazing. Or do you some? That's yeah. right. Get you some cock so sauce. Good. So I had a little cock sauce on a barbecue chicken breast and just lightly basted it on there. I'm sure it's got a little sugar in it, but not too much and no desserts for us. Made for the first time ever a really low fat mashed potato. Used Yukon Golds and again used yogurt. Used yogurt to kind of bind it and not hardly any butter, just a little pat of butter. We used a little bit of Gruyere cheese and a little bit of Parmesan cheese, but again, not very much. It was great. And they just used ranch packet. Yeah, we used a, mm. a packet of ranch powder, powder. Mm -hmm. and used some other seasonings and, of course, garlic and stuff that really doesn't have much calories. I made a huge full bunch of mustard greens. I'm a mustard green fan. I grew up in Memphis. I'm from the South. I love greens. And rather than cooking them in a bunch of fat, I basically just put a tiny little bit of olive oil in the pan and cook them down. And then same thing. I hit them with a little bit of stock of some beef stock or some chicken stock cook them down and lots of salt and some garlic. I don't even put vinegar on them. I mean, I like vinegar on them, but didn't have it last night. So I had that. And then we had a big giant kale salad as a family. And that kale salad was nails. Amazing. Really delicious. So kale, good. cranberries, crunchy, crunchy little mm, bit of sunflower definitely seeds. Definitely my favorite. Yeah. Really, really good. And kind of a balsamic. And it's just like salad kit. So yeah. it's not anything there's yeah. cabbage in it there's yeah. some other little things in it too so you and i had really two good. full servings of veggies for breakfast we had our carrots mm -hmm. at lunch and then i had two big servings of vegetables at dinner everybody else had one so five servings which is pretty yeah. good for me i had a little snack today of cottage cheese and tomatoes you had a snack of cottage cheese and tomatoes okay so, so you had some additional, I had my additional yes quote unquote veggie there we go. <laughs> and then I always have, I start every morning, I think you guys know this, but I start with uh, Athletic Greens Supplement, which may or may not actually count as a vegetable. I don't really think of it as a vegetable. I think of it more of right. as a daily vitamin that I take. I like Athletic Greens. 
been a fan of them for a while and I put it in a, just a bottle of water and take a bottle of water and drink it usually after my first coffee and, and whatnot. So continued, everything else is still going well, drinking tons of water every day. Tons of water. Tracking our food. We're having lots of fun tracking our food actually on my fitness pal and kind of gamifying that and things have gone really well for us. And so, yeah, all is going well so far. So excited tomorrow. Uh, we've got to bump up the fiber. Have you seen any like your complexion change with drinking a lot of water? Or yeah. I feel like my skin has cleared up a lot. Yeah. Like, Isn't that wild? Barely, barely breaking out. It's so weird. Which could be the water. It also could be the reduction in crap that we eat. Right. <laughs> that too. The combination of possibly the that. combination of both. So all is going well and we'll talk to you tomorrow and we'll see how we do with fiber. Fiber's a tough one to get in. We've got to try to get in, I think it's twenty five grams of fiber tomorrow. So that's tough to do with real food and not supplements. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, and we're back with day seven, 10 day challenge. Fiber today, this is sort of the end of the day for us. It's interesting. I have tried to hit kind of general fiber goals before and 25 grams, 30 grams, somewhere in there, that is a bunch of fiber. I did not really on purpose do this. I'm going to get to the details here in a minute because I tracked on my fitness pal and I'm weighing and measuring everything. This isn't like I'm, I'm eyeballing nothing. Everything is being made at home. I had 68 grams of fiber today. Holy cow. And uh, so it could be a fun night for you. Oh. <laughs> so luckily you're, we you're have. You're very regular anyway. <laughs> luckily we have uh, separate blankets. <laughs> <laughs> so breakfast started, we almost always eat breakfast together. I had a normal breakfast. I actually had leftover monster mash I had and I mixed it with eggs. I had some spinach in it. I didn't have a ton of fiber at breakfast. I had a few grams of fiber just with the stuff that I had kind of whole grain rice and I had the spinach and some of that stuff, but nothing that was overwhelming for breakfast. You didn't have much for breakfast this morning, right? Well, we didn't train today. So typically on days that we don't train, I fast in the morning. Okay. Yep. So yeah, for the morning, I just had my cold brew. So Kinsley, you started eating carrots today. Kinsley's on yep. the show. And you had a bunch of carrots would have quite a bit of fiber in it. Mm -hmm. And so you did a pretty good job there. Did you have some of those for breakfast or did you start with that uh, for lunch. lunch? Okay, for lunch. So I had my mid-morning snack. This is one of the interesting things that it's important to make the point of. We have a handful of things that we use, which are not supplements, but are clearly you're essentially eating them for the fiber, right? And, and those are for us brand buds or grape nuts or chia seeds, which we can put in, which I love putting in my Siggy's yogurt. If I have a power food for when I'm trying to eat healthy, it's Siggy's or some version of Greek or Icelandic plain yogurt, unflavored yogurt. I sweeten it up a little bit with a little bit of Splenda usually. Sometimes I put berries in it. Sometimes I put nuts in it. And then I can put one of these three options. But when we really looked at, so brand buds have a ton of fiber. I think it's 17 grams of fiber for a serving Ooh. of brand buds. But it had like seven grams of added sugar, something, something like that. Like a surprising amount of added sugar. I thought it was 15. Mm, I don't. It, it was a lot of added sugar, yeah. more than it should have been. So I was like, I don't really want the added sugar. Grape nuts had seven or eight grams of fiber and no added sugar, one or two, one gram or something. It was very, very low, but the fiber wasn't as high. Now, listen, seven, eight grams of fiber, a serving of anything is pretty high fiber. Right. So it was just half or less of what the brand buds were. And then the chia seeds had quite a bit of fiber. I'm trying to remember what they were, 12 or 13 grams of fiber, and yeah. they had no added sugar, but they had 10 grams of fat, something right. like that, right? So chia seeds, that's <laughs> the fat. So it's, yeah, so there's a trade-off with any of it. What I opted to do is I think what I did was I did a quarter of a cup of chia seeds and a quarter of a cup of grape nuts and didn't have the brand buds. So I didn't have that. I love the crunch of grape nuts in a, one of my buddies, Wade, taught me that. He came over to the house and stayed um, a year ago for the first time. And he said, uh, I said, what do you eat for breakfast? He's like, give me the Greek yogurt. Perfect. We've got that. And grape nuts. And I was like, oh man, we haven't had grape nuts in my house. My dad and my brother used to eat grape nuts, like <laughs> just in a bowl. And they're so crunchy, they'll like break your teeth, but they're amazing. So the chia seeds and grape nuts in yogurt were great. And that bumped my fiber up right. tremendously and started me on the road. So I had that for mid morning snack. What did we eat for lunch today? So we didn't eat at the same time. 
you were working on some work. Right. And so I had some of the leftover chicken salad from yes. yesterday and I put those on mission, low carb, high fiber tortillas. tortillas right. So I got a lot out of just those two yes. tortillas. I ended up having 43 grams of today. fiber today. But, oh, yeah, yeah so all together. Also were really high. Yeah. I had also had leftover chicken salad that we had made that was delicious. And I had a Fairlife protein shake, one of those 30 gram protein shakes. What we like about those, we buy those at Sam's and they're always in the fridge. It's like 30 grams of protein and essentially no carbs and no fat. It's just a shot of protein, which is really nice. So if you need a nice bonus of protein. And then dinner tonight, we made homemade oh taco God. salad and crushed it so we use super lean ground beef, which we love. And we've kind of figured out we make, this is a staple in our house. Of course, we made a few modifications, both for the fiber and to try to keep the fat and sugar as low as we could. But flavor of the meat was great. Had a big serving of black beans, which have high very fiber. high fiber. Decided to eat. You and I both had really a whole avocado. There, It was kind of a small to medium size avocado each. So, oh, so and we I. had the fat, we had, oh, and yeah, you had some too, yeah. right? Kinsley had some too, and also had the black beans. Avocado obviously has a lot of fat in it, but it has a lot of fiber, and we had the fat to give because right. we had banked it earlier in the day, so exactly. it worked pretty well. I love tortilla chips in, first off, my favorite snack on earth has been my whole life. I think there is some nostalgia there. I love white corn tortilla chips, and I eat Santita tortilla chips all the time you guys know two dollars a bag i love them and they're not terrible for you they're better than potato chips but they're not great and so what i did i was like man i really don't want to have this taco salad and not have the tortilla chips so what i did is i took two of the mission carb the same tortillas low carb tortillas high fiber tortillas and they're the kind of smaller fajita versions yeah fajita size i put them in the oven i put them both in the oven got them crispy and then broke them up and used those as the base tortilla chip for my taco salad. And then I took about a half of a serving of normal Santita tortilla chips. So I still had the real Santitas in there and crushed them up and put them in my taco salad. So we had that. We had tomatoes. We had onions and peppers, red bell pepper. I had an entire jalapeno chopped up in mine. Cilantro. Cilantro, a little bit of cotilla cheese. It was just awesome. It was delicious. So tons, tons of fiber there. My macros for dinner tonight were 67 grams of protein, 79 grams of carbs, and 52 grams of fat. Ooh. So I had 50 grams of fat. But I had it to give. I still have 16 grams left. So I still actually have 500 calories for the day. And it's 830. It's about time to go to bed. I'll probably just have maybe a little yogurt or a protein shake before I go to bed to get a little more protein in. So yeah, it was good. It was good. And the girls had it as well. And lots of good fiber. It wasn't that yeah. hard. Now. Yes. We have not been having dessert. That's right. And me being <laughs> the craver of desserts, this has helped us get a little creative with things. Yep. And so we started doing some research on things that are high fiber today, all day. And one of the things that came up was raspberries. And so we got some raspberries at the grocery store and then got some fat-free sugar-free vanilla pudding. Yeah, we wanted cheesecake pudding, we but they did. were out of it. Yeah, that would have been a lot better. As a matter of fact, our kid, we sent our kiddo, Kaylin ran to the grocery store for us. Our and she took it, she was like, driver. she was like, it was like a hurricane had come. She said, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the pudding and jello aisle, but it's been just pillaged. <laughs> so there's no... Of just cheesecake. Yeah, so, if, so anyway, so we had vanilla, sugar-free, fat-free pudding <laughs> that you made. Made yep. with no fat... Fair milk. life skim milk. Yep. That's right. Fair life skim milk. And then we sprinkled some raspberries on top of it. it. Pretty, pretty yeah. dang good. It was really good. It it met the the craving. Yeah. I don't I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. No, not at all. So yeah. Not at all. Just a quick other side report is maybe a little bit TMI. I peed like twelve times this morning by nine <laughs> or ten o'clock this morning. It was really strange. I didn't have any more water this morning than I've been having all along. I drink a lot. I said this already on this podcast. I drink a lot of water anyway, but I've drank specifically focused on drinking more water than I normally do. And a lot of that is just because I'm not drinking anything else. I'm not drinking any alcohol. I'm not having any cocktails. I don't drink much of anything else anyway. I mean, water is pretty much what I drink. I don't ever drink soda. I don't really ever drink tea. I very rarely drink tea. It's mostly just water. And alcohol, sometimes protein and shakes and coffee, obviously. <laughs> yep, coffee yeah. in the morning. 
and the coffee is a little bit of a diuretic, obviously, but um, I didn't have any more coffee this morning than I normally have. I had all the same water I normally have. And I woke up this morning, I felt like I had a really good day yesterday of nutrition. I stayed under my calories and my macros were all set. Woke up this morning, my waist was about a quarter of an inch bigger, like bigger around, and my weight was up about a half a pound. No big deal, right? I know that's that Very kind of common. stuff happens, kind of fluctuation day to day. And got up and I started to pee. And I, man, I peed like every 15 or 20 minutes. I realize it's weird talking about this. My kiddo's laughing. It's just, it's for those of you that are going to go through it because of the amount of water you're drinking. And as you cut out other things, it felt like my body let go of the bloat today. It was really interesting. I'm interested to see what my weight and waist are tomorrow when I get up. And it's the lowest. It already is the lowest it's been in two years. Yes, you're trying to look very spilt. Thank you. Weight and waist are. (laughs) The lowest it's been in over two years, but I, yeah, it was interesting. Didn't feel unhealthy, didn't feel sick, didn't feel like I had a urinary tract infection or anything. I just, it was like my body just said, okay, I need to learn how to regulate the amount of water that we're drinking. And so it started letting it go. And I just, I peed all morning and then it kind of by lunchtime or so balanced There's out. There's a song about that, isn't went, it? What's that song, Kinsey, about letting it go? <laughs> Is that talking about pee? You mean like the frozen? So about, so. Things are going well. We continue to add to it. This, again, it's sort of like math class, right? We're adding a little bit each day and don't forget the stuff that we learned in previous days. Water has been good. No mindless snacking. Very low sugars for us. We've been tracking all of our food. High fiber, high vegetables, no alcohol. This is my third day. No alcohol and really no cravings. We had with Mexican food which I don't know if you'd call what we made, taco salad, actual Mexican (laughs) food, Americanized Missouri Mexican food. I would love to have a cerveza would be really nice or a margarita. Margarita. And I drink, I drink, I was telling you, any cocktails I make now, I don't make sweet. So if we make margaritas at home, it's like a legit traditional margarita. It's mostly tequila and mezcal and lime juice and just a little bit of like Cointreau or Grand Marnier. And that's it. I don't put any agave nectar in it or anything anymore. And so I don't really want the sweet. But yeah, it would have been nice to have just a cold cocktail or a beer would be nice with the lime in it. But uh, this has been perfectly fine. Really, it hasn't been as tough as I thought it might be. And so hopefully you got a few more days to go. Kinsley, you have any cravings or anything where you're like, "Mm, I really want this this or or is everything been okay? No, not really. Anything? Anything, Kaylin? I really wanted a Snickers bar. (laughs) <laughs> oh really? So bad. When at school or <laughs> like? Well, no, not at school because you know I got to celebrate my birthday. All oh the kids, right, right. All the so kids you actually ha- celebrated. You didn't tell. Me. We didn't. Yes, we didn't. You didn't <laughs> tell this story. But they actually, because it was your birthday, they got yeah. you like cupcakes and stuff. Yeah, many so cupcakes. You, you had to cookies. do. A little, you did just a little bit just to kind <laughs> not of not to be rude. Everybody. But when yeah. people get it. to something, so, when did you crave nice. the Snickers? T- like. I don't know, a few hours ago before oh, really? dinner. Yeah, I was like, there's a Snickers bar in my She's drawer. Getting that hungry. What do you mean so there's a, you were supposed to clean that stuff out? All right, tomorrow <laughs> on the chore list, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about this tomorrow. On the chore list tomorrow, you guys clean out all of the snacks out of your drawers and out of your bedroom, and you have to put it in a single basket or container, and then we're going to go through it on the podcast tomorrow. We'll see what's actually, oh, we'll see no. what's hiding. No. We'll see. We'll see. Oh. So, tell us, so you already did it, Kinsley? Yeah, all I had was a half Santita's da- bag in my drawer. That Unacceptable. Was it. Santita's are daddy's chips. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like saying all you had was a bag of Santita's and a half a bottle of bourbon. Be quiet. <laughs> You're rating my food. All right, so we'll we'll see what Kaylin has. Kaylin, the 16-year-old kid who basically looks like a CrossFitter, we're going to see what is actually in her junk drawer. Junk drawer not being batteries and scissors and old receipts, but uh, <laughs> Snickers and Halloween candy. Thank goodness for metabolism, am but, I right? That's, <laughs> for a few more years. Yeah. For a few Enjoy more it. years. So, all right. So that's it for day seven. Day eight tomorrow. This is the caffeine one. This is going to be easy for us, I think. Cut off caffeine consumption at oh, least yeah. six hours before Simple. bed. We're pretty good at that anyway. If I don't, I can't sleep at night. It doesn't bother me anymore. It used Ugh. to really bother me. I can have an espresso with dinner, but I usually don't. And so probably what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I don't have any more caffeine. I'm going to have my two espressos in the morning when I first wake up and no caffeine for the rest of the day. That's kind of what I'm going to do. Easy. I think that's that's kind of well, sounds like plan. You know, I don't drink coffee or soda. <laughs> so you don't like really have tea. caffeine. 
Well, I little haven't been drinking tea. any tea. Yeah. That's true. Because it's sugar. <laughs> that's true. So no tea. All right. So that's tomorrow. So that's a little bit of a gimme for us, which is good. We'll maintain what we're doing and we'll report back shortly. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.